Thanks for staying with us. It was controversial. Some called it corporate welfare. The previous Malloy administration offering up front uh, incentives to companies that relocate here and create jobs and to companies already here that grow their workforce. But that's going to change if Governor Lamont has his way. He wants to turn that around, make the program performance based. That is, you produce the jobs first and then you'll get your tax breaks. Now, this is an idea drawing praise even from Republicans. And joining us now to explain it and talk about the the process and uh, where we go from there. The State Commissioner of Economic and Community Development, David Lehman. Thank you, sir, for Welcome. coming in. No, morning. Thanks for having me, Al. Jeff. Well, uh, who spotted this glaring error in, in our past? So first off, I, I wouldn't call it a glaring error. I, I think the market has shifted for the last 10 years um, to where we are today. Uh, so when I got in the chair roughly 12 months ago, I spent a lot of time looking at the data around incentives, what Connecticut had done, uh, what other states had done, and, and where the current market is for this, because other states are competing with these incentives. And what we determined is we thought there was a solution where we could provide lower costs to, to Connecticut taxpayers and lower risk incentives and still be effective in growing the state's economy. So, so that's what prompted the shift. So explain to us what your mentality was when you were doing it and how it works. So a company wants to come here. What happens after that? Yeah, so for, for First off, we, we looked at a lot of other states and, and how they did incentives, and the key is performance-based. We, we want to make sure Connecticut taxpayers are not exposed to the risk because any incentive is coming from Connecticut taxpayers to these businesses that are growing jobs. So what needs to happen in, in Governor's new plan is uh, a business needs to create 25 or more jobs in specific industries, and we're very focused on industries that are core to Connecticut's economy, like financial services, manufacturing, aerospace, defense, life sciences. So if you're in those industries, 25 or more jobs and above a certain wage threshold, we're also very focused on growing median wages in the state, you're eligible. So one of the beautiful things about the, the new program, in my opinion, is um, if you're in those industries and you create the jobs above those wages, you're eligible as of right. So there's transparency and simplicity that all others around the state and in, in the municipalities can also look to and benefit from. It just seems to make total sense instead of uh, putting the incentives up front and then if the jobs aren't produced, you got to run around chasing them to try to get your money back or get, you know. So it doesn't make sense at all. But now this idea, how hard is it going to be to actually implement it? And do you think because they would have to come in without, you know, with a promise of creating jobs and not get anything until they actually do, uh, how, yeah. how much is that going to cut down the number of people, number of companies that want to come in? So I, I don't think it's going to cut down the number of companies. Uh, I think this will re we will remain competitive, and we've already started utilizing this. So if you look at, at bonding at, at DECD just in the past year, uh, it's down by roughly 140 million, or 70 percent year over year. On average, we were bonding roughly 200 million across DECD programs. Last year was around 60 or 70 million. So we're already starting to do this, and I think the key here is, and we've spent a lot of time diligencing this, incentives don't grow the economy. What grows the economy is a great transportation system, great education and workforce, tax certainty, and importantly in Connecticut, we need to focus on our cities. That's what's going to drive people to Connecticut, jobs to Connecticut. Incentives, that's not the key to growing the economy. We need to have them to be competitive, but we need to focus on our strengths in transportation, workforce, building out our cities. We had a little bit on this on our show last week. Senator Fasano, again, was our guest, and he was saying um, when we were in commercial break that this is something that they can get behind, that Republicans also support, and he believes it's going to be bipartisan. What part of this has to be legislative if you've already started doing it um, at you know your agency sure so the 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 new format for job CT does require legislation we've utilized uh, an existing program called the manufacturers assistance act to structure the deals in a way similar to job CT so this will require legislation we've spent a lot of time on both sides of the aisle talking and socializing this with legislators and the feedback's been been very positive to date everyone appreciates the reduced costs on average the state was previously uh, paying roughly fifteen to twenty thousand dollars per job uh, and in into the new program it should be five to ten thousand dollars per job so we're very hopeful this will have bipartisan support and really look forward to working with the legislator now how long are these people these companies coming in or the companies looking to expand here in Connecticut going to have to produce the jobs uh, before they're they're sure. kicked out so well, what we envision is there's a, a two-year period where the company creates the jobs or brings the jobs to the state. And importantly, companies that are relocating to Connecticut or companies that exist in Connecticut and are just growing here, both of which are eligible. After that two-year period, companies could benefit from the partial rebate for up to seven years after that. And at that point, the program would end. How do you figure the numbers on the rebate, on the taxes? So th this comes down to the analysis we did at looking to, at the competitive set. What are other states doing? What is the market for this uh, right now? Because it's, it's a competitive environment, so we need to be a participant.
You were saying that um, your agency's finances and the bonding is already down from Correct. that. So it's really not costing us more money to do this. You're actually saving money? Is that what yes, I'm understanding? Yes, that, that's right. We, we, we think this will save 100 or more million dollars per year done, uh, done in the way that we envision it. And as I mentioned at the outset, this really needs to be a balance because any payment to a company that's coming here, growing here, you know, that's at the expense of the broad Connecticut tax base. And we need to be very, very careful that we have the right balance because we are spending taxpayer money on this. And I think we really want to minimize that cost to taxpayers. Well, the, uh, the, the jobs, that, uh, what kinds of jobs are you looking for? What kinds of industries uh, or organizations are you looking to attract? Yes, yeah, sure. So the industries that, that I mentioned before, financial services, life sciences, yeah. manufacturing, aerospace defense, okay. just to name a few, renewable energy, we're very focused on a couple things. Uh, industries that we think uh, already have strong ecosystems in the state and can continue to thrive in the state, these companies. Uh, good paying jobs, importantly, we really are focused on incentivizing good paying jobs. If you look empirically, the state has lost good paying jobs and actually uh, lower wage jobs is what we've grown over the past decade. Mm -hmm. So we're very, very focused on companies that can really thrive and do well here in the state. And and what are we doing job. about the jobs that are going begging because we don't have people trained to, to take them, like down at the sub uh, sub area, submarine yeah. construction. It's a great question. So the, the governor convened the Governor's Workforce Council this past October, which has 24 members, 13 of which are from the private sector, including the president of Electric Boat is on it, Kevin Graney. And that, that is very similar to what other states do in workforce that do it well, led by the private sector, but you have educators, government, not-for-profits, and the private sector all around the same table. And the private sector is informing everyone what skills they need, who they're looking for, to make sure government can address those needs. So states that do workforce well do it just this way, and that is what Lamont has put in place. Well, Dave Lehman, thank you for coming on. Your Appreciate first visit it. with us. We hope you'll come back. Great. Al, Jen, thanks for having me. This Appreciate great. it. All right, up next after a quick break, the reporters of the Roundtable are here. They're going to give us their insight. Veteran political journalists Chris Keating from the Hartford Current and Keith Faniff from the CT Mirror. They're going to break it all down for us. Stay with us.